there are four steps to build a model. The first step to building a model is to create a layout. It is helpful to import an AutoCAD or other layout file so we know where to place the resources as we build the model. To do this, select the Backgrounds icon from the toolbar, then select Add a Model Background. In the File Path field, select the DWG file you would like to import. The drawing can be sized to the grid using the options in the Model Background properties. With the drawing in place, drag a source, a queue, three processors, and a sync into the model grid. The second step is to define the flow of the flow items that represent our packaged products in the process. To do this, press and hold the A key on the keyboard, left click on the source and drag the mouse to the queue and then release the mouse button. You should see a line connected from the source to the queue with an arrow from the source on the upper right side. The input arrow on the queue should be on the upper left side of the queue. Repeat the process to connect the queue to each of the three machines, and then from each machine to the sink. The third step is to detail the model. This means adding the correct process times and model logic to ensure the model behaves correctly. For this model, the only change we need to make is the process times for each of the three machines. We will try and balance this process the best we can. There is some variability in the arrival rate, so we will keep the default arrival rate of exponential 10 seconds, meaning on average, we will have a box arrive every 10 seconds. Since we have three machines, we'll try to maintain balance by giving each machine a processing time of 30 seconds. With the new model now complete, we move to step four, where we run the simulation and evaluate the model. In order to evaluate the model, we'll need some kind of performance indicator to gain information about how the model is performing. Since the objective of the model is to look at the utilization of the machines and the wait time of the boxes in the queue, we need to add a couple of charts to the dashboard so we can see what's going on. To do this, select the dashboards option from the toolbar and then select Add Blank Dashboard. This will dock a blank dashboard panel to the right of the layout view. If you click on the panel, the library on the left will change to a selection of chart templates that you can drag into the dashboard panel. There are two charts we want to add to the dashboard to help us understand what is happening when we run the model. The first is a state chart. Add the chart by clicking and dragging the state chart from the library to the dashboard panel, and then click on the chart you'll see the properties of the state chart in the Properties panel. Select the Picker icon in the Objects field and then select each processor in the model so that each one shows up in the field. The second chart is a stay time chart, so click and drag the stay time chart from the library into the dashboard panel just below the state chart. Click on the chart and then use the picker to add the queue to the chart. The last thing to do is set the time that the model will run for. For this model, eight hours should be sufficient to see its behavior. Select the down arrow just to the right of the runtime field on the toolbar. Down at the bottom of the pop-up window, check the stop times box, then set the stop time to 4 p.m. Hit reset, then run to watch the model run. You can adjust the run speed control to speed up the model to run the eight hours in a matter of seconds. Now that the model has run for eight hours of simulated time, we can look at the results of the run. Wait in time of the queue is 278 seconds. Average processor utilization is 98.5%. This means that on average, parts are sitting in the queue around 90% of the time. This bottleneck is caused by the high utilization of the processors, which is over 98%.
To relieve the bottleneck, we must lower the utilization of the processors. As you can see on the utilization versus wait time chart, if the utilization of the processor could be lowered to 92 or 93 percent, the wait time in the queue would decrease significantly. One of the main benefits of simulation is that it allows the user to quickly test what-if scenarios and better understand the system. To lower the utilization of the processors, there are three options available to us. Reduce the arrival rate, add another machine, or speed up the processing time. We can assume that the arrival rate is the pace at which customer orders arrive, so we don't want to slow that down. We can also assume the purchasing of another machine is an expensive option that could be avoided. It's decided that the least costly option for us is to use training and automation to speed up the process. The goal is to lower the utilization of the processors by roughly 10%. To do this, we would need to reduce the process time by 10%, or a three-second reduction in the processing time at each machine. Changing the process time is simple. Just click on the processor, go to the Properties panel on the right, find the Processing Time field, and change it from 30 seconds to 27 seconds. Do this for each machine, then rerun the model. Now that the model has run for eight hours, we can look at the results of the run. Wait time in the queue, 54 seconds. Average processor utilization, 90.5%. Looking at the utilization versus wait time chart, you can see the average wait in the queue has dropped significantly to just 54 seconds, and the utilization has dropped below 91% on average. The bottleneck is cleared, and only a small number of packaged products remain in the queue. Over the course of time, this represents huge savings by eliminating waste and improving throughput. This is the essence of process optimization and the improvements you can find by using FlexSim to simulate and optimize your processes.